Like Haven, Lotus is a three-site map similar in size with tight claustrophobia-inducing corridors with an added twist in the form of revolving doors you can activate with a button from both sides. And of course, a breakable door between A and B throws even more complexity into the map. When you consider all of these variables, Astra becomes even more appealing due to her control of the entire map. During a recent livestream, Riot developers were asked what team compositions would be good on Lotus. Here's what they had to say. Um, I think Astra is good on the map. Personally, I, I found more success with Dome Smokers, um, especially like trying to work A. I didn't see that um, moment. Yeah, I think uh, Dome Smokers will be quite good on this map. Stick around and I'll show you exactly why Astra will dominate on Lotus. I'm chill and let's get into it. Before we get into the thick of it, let's talk about how these loud ass revolving doors work and how they interact with Astra's abilities. Should you just leave the doors alone? Should you put a star on them? As with most things, it depends. Some quick things to note, with Omen Smokes you can one way and with Astra's unfortunately you cannot. The star just gets placed inside the door. You can see it from both sides if you place it directly in the center. The door doesn't destroy the stars like other utility, so don't be afraid to place stars down in the door's path. Astra's stars emit a low humming sound when you stand close to them, and the door's audio will completely mask it, so this allows you to really surprise them with a star on the other side of the door, similar to the automatic door on Fracture. Another important thing to know is Astra's cosmic divide has no effect on the audio of the door, so no big brain 500 IQ plays can be made with this combination. However, the breakable door audio is affected by Asher's wall, so be careful when using her ult around it. That aside, what can you do with Asher's stars and the revolving door? On defense or attack post-plant situations, placing a star on the opposite side of the door as your opponent can be a nice way to surprise them in order to keep them on their side of the door or help yourself get a pick. A well-timed suck or concuss works very well here. You can also smoke enemies trying to push through the doors and save that fourth star as a gravity well for post plant. Okay, enough door tech, let's talk about what to do on pistol, save, and eco rounds. On pistol rounds, I would either buy light shield to survive ghost one taps, since many people will probably buy a ghost on Lotus due to the long A and C lanes, or you can go ghost yourself and two stars for a total of three if you're feeling confident. Having as much utility as possible while being harder to kill may be the better option here, especially on a three site map. On save rounds where you only have one star, I'd probably use it as a smoke in one of the defender's chokes that's long range, since your teammates will mostly be using sidearms while your enemies will use more powerful weapons. On defense, you'll want to use that star reactively at the first sign of attacker activity. Keeping your teammates alive as long as possible until you rotate is your priority as Astra in these situations. On Ecos, you can opt for Stinger Light Armor and any stars you can afford while having enough to full buy the following round. On bonus rounds, you may only be able to buy one star, light armor, and a sidearm depending on whether you died round two or not. It's usually a good idea to have two stars when possible for smokes on attack and defense. For each full buy attack round, you can place default stars. These stars act as constant threats to the defenders while conditioning them by doing the same actions each round. It can force them to have to watch a position you may or may not be moving into. An example of a good default setup on Haven would be A Garage Window and A Long. Time will tell what the most optimal default stars will be on Lotus, but I found that a star at the C Main Choke and middle of A Main could work very well for a few reasons. The C Main star can be turned into a smoke to allow your team to take map control of the mound area. You can more safely take the orb with a teammate and rotate out while keeping the C defenders guessing whether you're in this area or not. You can also use this smoke if you decide to split B by using the door. The A Main star, similar to the one often used on A Long on Haven, can be recalled to quickly get across the space between Root and Rubble, making the defender second guess if you crossed over or not. This could have great lurk potential for Astra if your team wants to hit B. Now that we have our default setups, let's discuss attack strategies when hitting A. Before moving into A, you can place Smoke's A stairs and A top to take sight. If you want a little extra safety to walk up and take map control around A, you may want to smoke closer up by the double stack and grab orb. It's important to activate the smoke before your team peeks from A lobby because of the long stretch of ground to cover and potential for martial and op defenders in this position. You can use your concuss star for drop since they'll have nowhere to escape unless they have a movement ability, but you won't have an extra smoke for post plant. The safest position for planting A will be in A tree. 
playing anywhere on A is risky due to the many different angles the enemies could be retaking from, and the same goes for A main. You can play in these areas, but you'll have to have decent crossfires set up with your teammates. There isn't really a safe position to play, although the breakable door cubby offers a nice line of sight to the spike. You have to watch the door if it isn't broken already and a long flank from your spawn. The tree area also presents an easy wall bang opportunity if you have a high penetration weapon. Gravity weld the default by the box, and if you have a smoke remaining, you can place it close right blocking off the hut, back sight, and drop angles. This allows you to spam the diffuser through the wooden box more safely. Over on B, we can start by smoking C link and B upper since these will be the two spots you'll likely encounter defenders. You can throw a concuss A link or ask a teammate to send some utility in there as insurance. The best spot to plant would be by these boxes, so you don't have to fully expose yourself to multiple angles, but if you need to plant safe or someone has a lineup, you can plant in the bottom of the well. If you're just trying to take mid orb and not committing to B, you can smoke next to the orb and rotate out. Just be aware you could get spammed through the smoke doing this. B main will be your go-to post plant area, and it is once again close to a revolving door. This means you can get flanked from C during post plant, so placing a star on your side of the door to surprise the flanker can work well. I would use a smoke if you have one or a concuss to try to quickly dispose of them while you watch the spike. Last, we have Ashra's best site for post plant, C. Start by smoking C waterfall and then C hall as you move on to site. You can technically smoke this water area to block vision of both waterfall and the narrow lane leading to back site, but a defender could easily exploit this smoke and use it to their advantage. Another option is to place a smoke and concuss or gravity well right in front. Your safe plant spot will be at this broken corner pillar since it can't be wall banged. A better spot would be under the site waterfall or the corner closest to C main so you can play out on the mound for post plant. During post plant, if the spike is under waterfall, you can play near mound and have a nice line of sight to the diffuser. Here's one of the reasons Ashra is so strong on this site. This devious little gravity well that you can place off site under the diffuser is completely hidden. They'll never see it coming. If the spike is planted safely in the corner pillar, you have another devious suck. Place the gravity well as far out as you can from the spike toward the center of the site. While standing on the mound, pull the diffuser and if they don't resist, you'll briefly see them through this narrow crack. If they get back on the spike, move back into C main and you can wall bang them through this wooden panel. During post plant, be sure to place a star by the revolving door on your side so you can deal with any defenders flanking from B. Now let's go over some attack ults that you can use. The wall at A will depend if the breakable door is still up or not. If it's still up, you'll want to be able to hear if a defender breaks it. So if that's the case, the wall blocking A stairs and cutting off hut and back sight will be your best bet. If the door is already open, you can angle the wall in front of the door and move through the rotating door into the front right corner of sight. Just make sure someone stays back to watch if anyone flanks. There are a couple ideas for the B wall. The first can be this obvious one where you block off the three entrances to site in this diagonal fashion. The only problem I see with this one is if you plant in pit, the upper defender could potentially sneak down or throw some utility on you right as you're planting. The other idea involves a bit more thought and coordination. You can block off C link and upper while positioning the wall so that the front of A site is exposed and the back of C is blocked off. This wall can be used to mislead the defenders into thinking you're hitting either of the three sites. You'll have to make sure the defenders don't have much info on your location either, so hitting the site is unexpected. Last, we have the C wall. The best one I could find is this one that cuts the site diagonally in half. I like this one because it blocks off C waterfall and C hall while allowing room to plant in the safe corner or by the site waterfall. The other bonus is that it blocks the rotating door. This works well for two reasons. One, you can have someone play behind mound and watch the wall for any defenders trying to flank, and two, you can hide in the little cubby the Astral wall makes, still hear the door, and sneak behind the flanking defenders getting an easy pick, assuming they're unaware of your plans. Your default setup on defense will depend on things like your goals that round, the enemy attack patterns, and how many stars you have. If you only have one star, you may want to save it to smoke off an area the defenders are pushing, or if your team falls back, you can save it for the retake by either smoking the spike or smoking the choke where enemies are playing post plant. On your standard full buy rounds, you can put down two or three stars before the round begins. Since I think C might be Astra's strongest defensive position, placing a star in the back of the C main choke can be your go-to for most rounds. The second star may depend on where the attackers tend to go most often. If they're abusing the door mechanic by 
by A for example, placing a star there could be a good idea. I like the door stars because you can convert them into any of Asher's abilities. If one of your A teammates is watching Tree, you can plan something with them. Maybe a concuss or gravity well and damage dealing ability combo in the doorway. For a more aggressive default, you can place your normal C main star and two stars in front of the attacker's A lobby barrier. Have your A defender watch this spot as you smoke and gravity well attackers trying to quickly move towards door. This area is pretty closed in and reminds me of the common play that pros often use on Haven in a lobby. Obviously this will take some coordination with your A defender and making sure you have a raise or KO chuck a grenade or molly in there could get you a quick and easy kill. You can also apply this to B and C by smoking further up into these areas. If the attackers are often pushing sites quickly, you can always place a star C lobby and A lobby by the box stack to quickly activate smokes without having to go into astral form and take the time to place stars. Your A setup can look something like this. When it seems like an A hit is coming, I would almost always play this smoke gravity wall combo at the A main choke. Depending on the position of your A defenders, you can either play a concuss smoke in the tree door, or if no one is watching and the door opens, you can place a smoke reactively towards the tree choke close to sight. Make sure to recall that C main star to use for retake. This last remaining star can be used for smoking spike to defuse or re-smoking closer up in A main or tree. If the enemy rotates to another site, you can use this star similarly. A good position for your stars on B is shown here. You may want to position the smoke star further back into the corridor in case you or your teammate is playing by door and can use your smoke to hide from the attacking B players, potentially even getting a couple picks while you're in the smoke. Your last star can be placed in front as a gravity well. Make sure to recall at least one of your default stars to use for post plant depending on attacker positions. I would more often than not recall the A star. If the enemies decide B isn't a good idea, the rotate from B to C is much quicker and safer for the attackers, so I wouldn't recall the C main star until it's confirmed to be a B take. The C star could be used to retake B after it's off cooldown. Last, we have C. Just like on attack, I think Ashra will do very well on defense here. She can also play B if you have a sentinel playing C. If a C take is imminent, make sure to place down that gravity well. You can play in a few different positions on site and catch the attackers in your suck. Recall the A star and your remaining two stars can be used as a smoke on spike or C main and concuss for attackers playing on site. A common spot I can see attackers holding after the plank goes down is at bend since it offers easy access to the spike and sufficient enough cover to hide behind. A well placed concuss here can help with your retake. Finally, let's review some defensive walls for each site. The purpose of your wall on defense is to either prevent attackers from pushing site or retaking. More often than not, you'll want to use it for the retake. Your A wall can be placed right in front of the default plant in line with the front of site. You can play up against the wall to help your teammate defuse. If you want a little more breathing room, you can place it further back blocking the A main and tree chokes. On B we can do something similar, but I would push the wall back a bit so you can play on this ledge. If they try to knife you through the wall, they'll have to jump to get that headshot knife kill. I've found the best wall for retaking C is probably this one that runs in line with the far edge of sight from the defender's perspective. If the attackers plant safe under waterfall or even back by the box stack, this wall will block vision from the main areas they'll be playing. As a bonus, if they plant waterfall, you can hear the footsteps through the wall since they'll be close enough where it isn't completely muted audio. If you have teammates alive, one of you can play by Ben to watch as they push through the wall. I hope I was able to lay out the floor plan for you Ash Remains and give you a place to come back to in case you get lost in the complexity of Lotus. If this video helped you, dropping a like is very helpful. Comment below what you'd like to see from me next. And subscribe because I'm making an updated Asher guide for Split next. So you don't want to miss that one. If you're looking for more Asher content, check out this one next. Thank you guys for watching all the way through and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.